If you have any kind of need to quickly install and set up WordPress to run tests, to try different combinations of tools out, but you don't want to have to go to the hassle of setting up hosting, SSL certificates, domains, and all those kinds of things, maybe today's video is going to be something that's useful for you. We're going to be taking a look at InstaWP, which is currently on offer on AppSumo. However, it isn't a lifetime deal. It is an annual deal, but at a reduced price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the tools, what it offers, how to use it. At the end of the video, I'll show you the pricing, and then you can make up your mind if this is something you want to look into yourself. Timestamps in the description below if you want to jump around quickly to see any of the particular points that I want to cover. So first of all, what exactly does InstaWP offer us? Well, let's hop over to the site and take a quick look at the features that it offers. Instant Sites, as its name suggests, this allows you to quickly spin up a site and all the things that are needed around it. And we'll cover that in a little detail in a moment. No server. Everything is done on the InstaWP server, so you don't need to worry about external hosting or anything like that. SSL certificate, that's installed as part of the server on InstaWP. So again, one less thing you have to worry about. Automatic domain just basically means it's going to create a random domain name for you that you can use for testing purposes. Your PHP and WP or WordPress version, this is something that is incredibly useful in my opinion. If you are using InstaWP to test something out that's on a different server and you want to mimic that server setup and your WordPress setup, you can do that by choosing what version and some other parameters for the PHP and WordPress. Pretty cool and we'll cover that in a moment. There's also some inbuilt tools, so if you want a code editor, there's a log, there's a couple of different things, including database and things like that. And again, we'll take a look at those as well. So those are the key features that you have as part of InstaWP. Let's hop over into the dashboard and take a look at the InstaWP dashboard, what it offers and how it all works. So you can see I've got a site already set up and you can see the domain is set up inside there, which is one of those temporary domains. It tells us how long to expire, the version of WordPress, the word version of PHP and how much disk space this is using. Now, let me just quickly say the whole point of InstaWP is to run sites up for a seven day period, unless you're using the free account, which I believe is two days. The whole point, like I say, is that you can kind of set it and forget it till you're testing. And if you don't need it after that, you don't have to worry about deleting it. It will automatically be deleted after that period of time. You can, however, lock this. If this is something you want to keep around a little longer, if you have a paid account, you can't do this on the free account, but if you have a paid account, you can come into more actions and you can reserve this site and that will kind of lock it from being deleted, which can be really, really useful. Okay, so let's just quickly take a look. So let's go ahead and click on Add New. And now we've got two different options. We can start from scratch or we can start from a template. Now we'll cover templates in a moment because they make a already quick process even quicker. We'll come back to that in a moment. So first of all, we've got the WordPress version. Six is, at the time of recording, the latest release of WordPress. But you can see we can revert back to older versions right the way back to 4.7 in this example. But we can also push forward into the betas, alphas, RCs, and so on. So if we want to just go ahead and test out a cutting edge version of WordPress prior to release. And we don't want to have to download and all those kinds of things. We can simply choose it from the list here. For this example, though, let's stick to the current version, version six. Then we can choose the version of PHP we want to work with. So you can see we can choose from 7.2 up to 8.1. Again, we'll leave that at the latest version. We can choose a configuration. Now, currently, I only have the default configuration because I haven't set anything up. But if you wanted to, you can set those up and use those here as well. And they are very much like templates, but more for the server than for the actual copy of WordPress. Again, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Then you can give this a name or you can auto generate one. So let's click on auto generate and you can see it's going to come with some strange random words, but hey, that's fine. So you can set this as a temporary site, which expires in seven days, or you can set it from this point as a reserved site, and that won't expire after seven days. Now, don't look at this as being a hosting plan. The whole point of this is not to be hosting websites to be delivered to the front end and all those kinds of things. This is just a testing demonstration, you know, sort of quick setup to run some tests and try things out. But if you want to, you can reserve this. So if you're testing something and you want it to stay around a little longer, you can set it to re be reserved. Like I say, that's only on the paid accounts. If you go to from template, you can see I currently have one template inside you, which I've set up to use the Bloxy theme, Elemental free, ACF free, and custom post type UI. So if I wanted to use that, I can simply click on it and that will then use that template. But I'll show you how to set those up yourself in a moment. Let's go back to from scratch. And once you've got everything, we'll regenerate a name and we'll click on Create Site. 
Now, it's worth noting while this is spinning up, you only have two gigabytes of storage. That's another reason why you wouldn't want to be using this for live sites. Now, you can map domains to this, but you can't do it in the AppSumo plan. You have to go to a higher plan like the Pro plan and so on. But like I said, that's not really the point of what you're trying to do here. So once we've done that, you can see how quick that was spitting that up. So that's now spun everything up. WordPress is installed. If we've chosen to use a template with themes and plugins and so on, it might take a little longer, but generally not a lot. And then everything is installed and set up for you. So you can see we've got a URL for it. We've got a username and we've got a password. We can go ahead, we can click on access now, and that'll open up a new tab and then log us straight into our site. And you can see there's our WordPress site all spun up. And from my limited testing, it's relatively quick to work with. It's not too bad at all. So let's close that back down. You can see it gives us a username and password. We can copy the link. So if you want to share it with someone else, we can share that information. And then if we take a look underneath this now, it gives us a list of all the sites that we currently have, how long they've got before they expire, the WordPress, the PHP, and how much disk space is being used. Ignore the fact it says not applicable. If we refresh this, you'll find that it will update and give us how much information or it should update. Might take a couple of minutes. But once you've got that, you can see it gives us a couple of pieces of information. It gives us the URL we can use. If we use it a template, it'll tell us the template underneath. So you can see this one is my test template using that Bloxy, Elementor, and so on version. I've got six days, X hours, and minutes to go, and the versions and everything I'm running. Now, if we take a look over on the right hand side, you can see we've got some icons. If we want, we can auto log in, and this will do pretty much the same thing as we just saw. It'll take us over to the admin for this particular site and log us in, so we don't need to worry about putting our username and password in. If we want to, we can open the database up, and this will open up the database itself, show us all the tables inside there, and now we could go ahead and make changes to this if we wanted to. So, if you were testing something out, you know, you're creating a plugin and you want to make sure that all your database entries are correct and all those kinds of things can all be done directly inside here. So that's pretty cool to see. If you come back out of that, then you can see we've got the I, which is the log, and this just gives us an error log and an access log. So if you are fault finding, you can find out what errors are being generated directly inside here, and you can wrap this if you want to as well. So if we take a look at the access logs, you can see it gives us all the information about the access to it. We've got a code editor, which allows us to go in and see all of the files that are part of our particular setup of WordPress and any plugins and themes. And you can see we can open any of these up, just double click, opens everything up. We can now go in and we can edit anything inside there. So it's all self-contained inside the one platform. So that's pretty useful. If you're working with code, you're creating a plugin or so on, that could be really useful for you. Then we've got the drop down arrow, which gives us a ton more options. So view creds is going to give us that login information, the URL to the admin and so on. You can migrate this if you want. So if you're setting a site up and then once you're finished, you want to push that over to a live site, you can do that by using various different options. So you can see if you've got a specific hosting company, you've got direct options inside here, but you can also just go into cPanel or even go down to FTP if you want to. And you can see if we open cPanel, for example, it asks us some basic information. We can then go ahead and set everything up inside there and migrate the site away. So you could use this as a development server and then once you're happy, you could push that over, migrate it over to the actual live server itself, all being done from inside InstaWP. So again, another cool feature. If we drop this down again, you can see we can export this as local WP. We can save this setup as a template. We can delete it. We can clone it, which will make an identical copy. So again, you may be thinking, well, I've got something that might break the site. You could quickly clone it, and then you could go make the changes. If it does break it, we've got an identical clone at that point in time. You can access via FTP or SSH from here. You can see map domain is locked. So if you have the free account or you have the, the plan, which I think is the like the individual kind of plan, something like that, you can't map the domain to it. So the plan that you have as part of Sumo, you can't map the domain. You have to move up a plan. And then you can reserve the site, which will lock it inside you. So if we click that, it'll just ask us, are you sure you want to do that? And that will then stop it from being deleted after that period of time before it expires. So that's the site side of things. Relatively simple and straightforward. What we can also do is we can come over to templates. And what templates does is it allows us to create a template from one of the WordPress setups that we've configured. So we may install themes, plugins, and customize various different aspects of it. And once we've done that, we can then choose that as a template. So if we come in and choose the option for add template, you can see that it lists both of the sites that I currently have. So the one we just created is basically just a blank copy of WordPress. The other one has, you know, Elementor and so on installed. So we'll use that as an example. We'll just select it 
We'll click on next. We can give this a name and we'll just call this sample. You can add a description if you want to. We'll just say sample. And then you can choose whether this is a private or a shared template. So if you've got multiple users, you can share this. Depends on the plan you have. Again, for me, I'm not worried about that. And you see we've got instant template, which is locked on this particular plan. So we're going to say save. And we've now created a template. So you can see sample. So now that we've created our templates, we've got a couple of different ways we can work with them. If we want to inside the template section, you can see we can come in to choose to edit this. We've got the next option then, which allows deployment. So we can click on that and see, please add a new repository in the deployments tab. Well, let's not worry about deployments for right now. You can go ahead and you can create a new site from this. So we can click, we'll say generate temporary site, create a site. And that's now going to go ahead and create a site using that template that's been set up with all the different settings that we want, all the different themes, plugins, and so on. It's relatively simple. I think you can probably see, I mean, it's literally taking me 10 minutes when I bought this to go in, test a few things out. I say, oh, okay, that's how it all works. So I don't think it's any kind of rocket size is required. It's just a quick and easy way of being able to run up WordPress sites and set various different things up. So you can see we now have, if we go back to sites, we now have three sites in there. One of these is now using that template. You can see it says from sample. And if we want to get rid of that, we can simply come over to the more actions and we can just say we want to delete it. It'll ask us, you sure? We'll say yes, let's get rid of it. Job done. Configurations is basically the same kind of thing as templates, but for the server. So in other words, you can set up the WordPress and the PHP version and use those as templates. So let's just say we wanted to set something up on a really experimental site. Well, let's say a WordPress version, we're going to go for the nightly build of WordPress and the PHP version we're going to run is version eight. You can see if we come into PHP, for example, we can go and set up the max execution time, input time, and various different options to configure that. And if you go into WordPress, you can see we've got options inside here as well, the switch on, debug mode, auto update of the core of WordPress when new updates come out. You can uh, automatically update and disable, so you can disable the updater. You can set this up to be multi-site. You can pre-install plugins and themes, and all you need to do is simply go ahead and upload or add in the zip files for the themes and the plugins you want to use. Specify whether it's a theme or a plugin. Click on plus until you've got everything you want. And then you can choose what you want to auto install as part of this configuration. So again, really quick and easy to make sure that everything is set up the way you want. Then once you've got everything configured the way you like it, you can say save as new. You can see there's default copy or we could have just clicked on save. It doesn't really matter. We can edit this if we want to. And we can just say bleeding edge WP. So we're running the latest builds of any of those. We'll save that. There we go. So now if you go back to sites, we can now go ahead and add new and we can say choose a configuration, bleeding edge WP, and we can say temporary site, click on create, and that's now going to go ahead and create things for us. Pretty cool. The way this is all set up is relatively simple and straightforward. Your deployments, if we come into that, we'll say add new. And you can see we can choose a repo type. And this is more to do if you're using Git, which I don't really use. So you can combine this and connect it up to Git. And you can see you can set this up to your GitHub. You can set it to be public or private, uh, the destination folder, the branch, and so on. The only thing you can't do is add deployment commands, which is locked behind the more expensive plans, which I suppose is understandable. So if you need, need to use GitHub, you may need to upgrade to a later plan or a higher plan if you need the full functionality. Now, that's pretty much those kinds of things. If we jump over to integrations, you can see we can integrate this with an extension with Chrome, and we can also integrate it into Slack. So if you're using Slack to get feedback and so on from your team, from clients, those kinds of things, you can connect that up directly inside here as well. I don't use Slack, and I don't really want to use the Chrome extension. I'm quite happy keeping everything inside the browser. But you do have those integration options should you want to use them. Finally, if we go ahead and take a look at the statistics, you can see this tells me what my plan is, how much of my two gigabytes I've got left over, how many sites I've got, if I'm using the restore option, how many template sites, how many GitHub quota operations I've got, those kinds of things. So it's a relatively simple tool to work with. If you want to spin up WordPress, it's very quick. If you want to spin up WordPress using specific template setup, again, it's really quick. Configurations for your server, 
is really quick. You want to connect up to GitHub, you can do that. If you want to integrate it into various tools, you can do that as well. So if we hop over to AppSumo and take a look at the price, you can see it is currently $34 and that's for one year. But what will happen, it will renew at that price. So the price you pay today is the price you'll carry on paying. And if we scroll down, you can see this tells us all the information about the plan. You can see one year of access to InstaWP plan and we get 15 active sites, two reserve sites with no expiry. So you can only have out of the 15, you can only reserve two of those that don't get sort of deleted after the expiry date. Two gigabytes of disk space, FTP access should you need it, five templates, 15 sandbox sites and advanced configurations. Now for most users, that's going to be more than enough. And if we take a look at the pricing for InstaWP, this plan is actually mapped to the personal plan at $9 per month. Or if we go over to yearly, that would cost you apparently $90 per year. So you're paying basically a third of it, and you only pay that every single time it's due to renew every year. But if you're like me and you do spin up a lot of WordPress sites or you want some way you can test things out without taking up space on your main servers, or you want to test something before you roll it out to a client site, lots of different use cases, then maybe this is something you want to take a look at. So now that we've seen how much this costs, the features that it has, and how the things work, what are my thoughts on this? What are my pros and cons? Well, first of all, pros. The cost, it is relatively cheap. $34 per year for the ability to spin up 15 active sites at any given time is a bit of a no-brainer for me. It saves me, I spend more than that on SiteGround and most of the time, once the tutorial or something has been done or the demonstration or whatever I'm doing, I don't really go back to that site. I tend to sort of reset it and then start again. This makes the whole process quicker and easier. Tie that into the fact that the templates for both the server setup and for the collection of plugins and themes and any alterations and things you make are all part of the package that makes life really really easy so there's a lot of things to like about this what about the cons though what don't i like well first of all i don't like the fact there's only two sites reserved out of the 15. i would like to see that up to five or ten or maybe the whole 15. i can't see what difference it would make because you can only have 15 sites active at any given time anyway so you could keep on refreshing that and go at 15 15 15. so I don't see what real difference the reserved side of things being limited to only two really makes the whole plan. I'd also like to see the ability to have more options for creating more templates. Again, give us more of those because at the end of the day, I can't imagine they're storing a huge amount of information because most of that's still being pulled from the actual servers online outside of InstaWP, or at least that's my take on it. But other than that, there's not really a lot to dislike about InstaWP. It's relatively cheap has most of the features you should need to do spinning up WordPress quickly for various different reasons, and the cons are not really big game changers anyway. But what are your thoughts? Is this something you'd be interested in testing out yourself? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.